maybe this wasn't a fair comparison. Maybe the Lego character's lack of knees holds them back when they try to kick. So let's see how the two Batman stack up against each other defensively. Of all the abuse we see Lego Batman take, probably the most savage hit comes in the Lego Batman movie's opening action scene, when the Joker succeeds in ramming Batman head-on with his car. Once again, we need to calculate force, which means getting mass and acceleration. Mass here is easy. The Joker is driving his notorious lowrider, Lego set number 70906-1, now available for $39.99 wherever Lego sets are sold, just in case you forgot that all the Lego movies are ultimately an attempt to sell plastic <laughs> toys to kids. Having access to a real-world version of the Lego vehicle means that we can easily find its mass, 0.63 kilograms or 1.38 pounds. And yes, that does include the mass of the Joker who is driving inside. God, I love doing episodes where all this information just exists because they're real-life products. For acceleration, we followed a similar procedure to the kicks, measuring distances and times using frame-by-frame -frame calculations, ultimately winding up with 4.6226 meters per second squared. So now that we have mass and acceleration, we can calculate force out to be 2.912 newtons or 0.654 pounds. Again, that looks like a small number, but this time, when we adjust it for Batman's weight, things change drastically. The ratio of the force he's able to sustain versus his weight is 99.653. That's the equivalent of a 200-pound man getting smacked with 19,930 pounds of force. And yet, here's Lego Batman just shrugging it off. That Danish-made plastic is built to last, so it's no surprise that a Lego superhero would have the same kind of durability. Surprise, surprise, plastic can take a lot more abuse than human tissue. Or so we'd assume, but to know for sure, let's check back in with our Dark Knight. While Lego Batman has to contend with Joker, and Sauron, and Godzilla, and Voldemort, Nolan's There was no Godzilla, unfortunately. Batman suffers defeat at the hands of a much more mundane villain. Who else drives you to one-up them the way that I do? Bane. Help me. Ah, here we go. Oh, but yes he does. In the Dark Knight trilogy, there's only one villain who succeeds in beating Batman in hand-to-hand -hand combat by giving him injuries that take months to recover from. And his name ain't Joker. I was wondering what would break first. Ah! Your spirit or your money? <sighs> After all these years, that voice is still so weird to me. Anyway, Batman's body does break, of course but how much it's damage is Batman's body actually taking? You know the drill by now, small. Analyze the footage, find the change in velocity during the moment of impact, multiply it by Batman's canonical weight of 95 kilograms and 210 pounds, and boom, you got it, the force. At the moment of impact, Batman's body's deceleration is 7.46 meters per second squared. Multiply that by his mass, and you find the impact of Bane's spine-shattering attack to be 708 newtons, or 159 pounds of force, which is not impressive. Not impressive at all, actually. It's not even enough to break a back. Now, that might seem weird at first, that we had a miscalculation somewhere along the line, but that's not actually true. What it's really telling us is that this scene was filmed practically. They used an actual stunt actor rather than using CG to make the impact look more brutal. And when you're filming stuff for real, you don't want the actor to be subject to forces that would actually break their back. Bane may not be pulling any punches in the fictional world of Batman, but apparently Bane's actor Tom Hardy here in the real world does. Probably for the best. So, to be a bit more fair to the live-action version of Batman, we can probably compare his body to that of a typical human to get a more accurate estimate for how much damage he could take from a supervillain like Bane. According to Ali Biden, a neurosurgeon at John Hopkins University School of Medicine, a spinal injury like the one that we see in the movie would require about 3,000 newtons of force, or about 674.4 pounds of force. It's an impressive number to be sure, but it's a far cry from Lego Batman's weight-adjusted 19,000. 930 pounds of force. So we're tied 1-1. In terms of durability, small plastic figurines blow humanity out of the water, but when it comes to feats of kicking strength, movable leg joints are apparently super useful. Except there's something else here. Something that clearly decides this Batman buff boy battle once and for all. You see, punches and kicks aren't the best way to determine Lego Batman's actual strength. Him at his strongest is actually showcased in something much more mundane and commonplace in the Legoverse. Building. In the original Lego movie, they make a big deal out of the fact that certain people in the Lego universe are master builders, making people like Batman, Emmett, and Unikitty part of this elite group. Master builders spend years training themselves to clear their minds enough, and yet, your mind is already so prodigiously empty 
that there is nothing in it to clear away in the first place. And it's this creative ability to think outside the box, or without instructions, that make master builders so powerful in the Legoverse. Except, maybe there's another quality than just pure creativity that matters. You see, at the start of the movie, when Emmett is going to work at the construction site, it seems like there's a lot of workers and infrastructure to accomplish what should be relatively simple tasks, like connecting a 1 by 2 plate to another plate. Hammers, cranes, hundreds of workers are involved in this process. And yet, later on in the movie, we see the master builders doing things like this in seconds with pieces that are much larger than themselves. It really does take a feat of super strength to whip those Lego creations together. How much super strength? Glad you asked. Because we're working with Legos, a widely used consumer product, the data is available to us. And according to a report measuring strength required to build with Legos, the brick separation on just two 2x2 two two bricks measures out at 5.2 pounds. That is over a thousand thousand times the force that we calculated for when Lego Batman kicked Alfred across the room. That means that his strength to weight ratio suddenly skyrockets. It comes out to 791.48. That's the equivalent of our 200 pound Christian Bale exerting 158 1,295 pounds of force. Just imagine some dude, or heck, Batman, walking up to an adult male African bush elephant, the heaviest land animal on the planet, and just, you know, lifting it up, and then just casually lifting up 11 more. That is the equivalent of what Lego Batman is doing here every time he pries apart two Lego bricks. This means that not only does Lego Batman handily beat out our Nolan Batman, but he does so to an absurd degree. Not not only is the Lego Batman one of the best written and best performed Batman in history, but strangely enough, he's also the most super powered. Dear DC, now that the news is broken that your extended universe is in need of yet another replacement for the man in black, I've got a little guy who just might be the missing piece you're looking for. But hey, not everyone can have a caped vigilante with a heart of pure blackness protecting them in their day-to-day -day life. But you can get the next best thing with our sponsor for today's video, NordVPN. If you've ever oh, how Batman just shows up places and the villains are... Lego Batman wins. That's kind of unfortunate because I kind of prefer the Nolan movies. Or the 1989 film for that matter. <laughs>